Welcome, my name is Jason Huggins. This screencast will provide an introduction to RIA. In this demonstration, we'll look at the key difference between a Web 1.0 application and the equivalent RIA implementation of the application. On this application, I have a form that takes two postcodes to get the location and calculates the distance between those two locations. The sleep time field is just there so that I can put an artificial delay into the processing to illustrate the difference between synchronous page based processing and the asynchronous RIA processing. I'll set the delay to 12 seconds. I now enter my first postcode. and say get district. We can now see that the browser is busy and it's going to delay for 12 seconds before I get my response. And now I have my response. Once I've got my response I can enter my second field and again now I'm going to have to wait 12 seconds while it does the processing on the server and after 12 seconds I should get my response. I can then calculate my distance. And there's my result. Now given that bit of processing we were looking at 12 seconds per process, so multiplied by 3, 36, plus some overhead when I'm typing, we're probably looking at about 45 seconds of work to do this process. If I rerun this page, and set it back to 12 seconds, what I'll illustrate now is that I can't do parallel requests, i.e. I cannot do things at the same time. So if I type in my first postcode, and say get, the processing is happening, we can see it's busy. If I start typing in my second postcode now, oh, we can see while I was typing, the first request came back, it's reloaded the whole page, so I lost my input. Another thing that can happen in this scenario is, again, if I type in a postcode, just refresh the page, I can send my first request, I may then type in a second postcode, hit my button and I've sent a second request which has overridden the first request. Now the first request is still running on the server, but it's now got nowhere to return the result to. So the only result I'll see come back is the second result, and there it is. So you can see that we can't do parallel requests, or at least we can't get parallel results coming back. We'll now look at the equivalent RIA implementation of the page. This page will illustrate the advantages of using the AJAX techniques to send the asynchronous request. It will also show the partial page update using JavaScript and CSS techniques. Okay, so if I enter my first postcode and hit get, have a dynamic update there, I can do my second postcode, do get. I get my second dynamic update. The first response comes back. I can actually send off my third response for calculating the distance. And we can see, in this case, I've got parallel updates happening, parallel requests going, but none of them overwrite the previous requests because partial information is being sent and partial responses are coming back. And then RIA techniques are used to do partial updates on the page. So the amount of data going backwards and forwards is greatly reduced. And because we have parallel work happening, 
the amount of time used to do the processing is saved because we don't have to do it sequentially. So we've not got the same 40 seconds we had before, we've now got a much shorter time. Another little thing to note with the AJAX requests is that the browser doesn't show it as being busy. So if I put in another postcode here, when I request data we can see that it isn't a full page load because the browser status isn't spinning, it doesn't say anything to indicate that the page has been submitted. There we can see my AJAX request has just come back. Thank you.